All right, the injuries for today, Ross Dwelly, ankle won't practice. Armstead, foot and knee won't practice. Um, Burford, knee won't practice. Luter, hamstring won't practice. Elijah Mitchell, knee won't practice. Ray Ray, rib limited. Go ahead. You mentioned the other day that you get more information on Armstead. What, what is kind of the prognosis now? Um, it's not an exact, I mean, it's not a number. It's not ACL, MCL, nothing I would be able to remember to tell you guys. So it's, I'd be surprised if he's ready this week. Um, still haven't ruled him out yet, um, but it's, it might be a week or two. What happened to uh, Elijah Mitchell? Uh, his knee was, was sore, just still sore, um, but nothing big right now, just still sore from the game. Just to clarify, it, it doesn't look like it's a long-term injury for Eric Armstead. Uh, hope not. That's why I'm hoping he and can roll him out for this week. But it's the fact that I'm saying already that I'd be surprised if he played this week. It's you've got to see how long it lasts. Yeah. Tim Long, especially the last few weeks, and the way he's, he's played. Um, I've been really started about, I want to say almost right when we got back from our bye week since then. Like Kim Law's game has gone up each each week. I think it gets better and better each week. He's finally strong enough, practice together, and um, being healthy this season that uh, I think he's really starting to get in a true, he is in football shape, but he's starting to play enough to where he improves every time he plays now. Um, same with the practice field, and I think he's really helped us out, and uh, he's taking some big steps going forward. Even before all the sideline stuff with Greenlaw last game, he did pick up the, the personal foul for the way he tackled. Uh, his eighth unnecessary roughness in the last three years. Uh, Nick called him the, the enforcer of this team. Obviously, that there's a physical tone he sets. How important do you think that is, and how close to the line do you worry about a player like that? Um, I think it's extremely important, and I, I think Dre's as good at it as um, anyone I've been around. Um, I mean, I think Dre is our enforcer. He's our most physical hitter. Um, we got a lot of guys who hit, but I think it's when he shows up more than others, which when his own teammates say that, I think that's the respect they give him. Um, I think Dre is unbelievable at it, uh, how physical he plays and how hard he goes. Um, the fact that it always looks close, but I, I know how hard Dre, Dre is not a dirty player at all. He plays one way and he's very, he is always, that's why he was so frustrated because he is trying so hard not to break the rules. In his mind, he wasn't completely slamming a guy. He's guys three yards in bounds and he's trying his hardest to get him down and he, everything he does is physical. And if you can see at the end, he, he tried to let up at the last second. It happened to be, it was a lighter player and um, Dre's pretty strong now. He should have been penalized for that. You can't slam a guy. Uh, I just, I know the person. Uh, I know how hard and conscientious he is. I know how hard he, you know, the one time he got ejected for the helmet to helmet on, on Herbert, that was, and he should have, but that, that was a cutback and him trying to go right to the change, and it was just an unfortunate deal. But um, I've seen some physical guys in this league who do lean towards um, the aggressive side, not in a good way. And I can't tell you guys how hard Dre tries to not get a penalty. Um, and when he does, it's usually right there on the line. And um, when you're a physical player like him, that to me jumps off the screen to not just players in the league, but to the fans and anyone, uh, they look for it. And it is a fine line, but his intent is exactly what you want in a football player. Do you excuse him for the, the, the stuff afterwards because he was touched by um, Or is that something you, you still say you can't do that? React to something? Oh, we show all that stuff. I mean, there was a guy... Um, I mean, we showed on, on Thanksgiving, they, they tried to flip our player at the end of the field goal. They flipped Ken Law on his head. They got a personal foul. Um, uh, Chase Young pointed at someone smiling. I'm showing it all in the view, and we're all just laughing. It's not a big deal. The other player's laughing at him. Then the next day on Friday, same thing happened in the Jets game. They tried to flip a player, um, Jets versus Miami, and they got in a scuffle, penalties through, and one of the players went to point at a guy and someone bumped his arm and it hit a ref in the face and he got ejected. And so I'm, I go back and I show Chase why his point is a big deal. His intent's fine, you're smiling, you're laughing, you don't get how close this stuff is that you accidentally hit someone in the face and you're out. I, I was shocked, I stick up for Dre that he was put in a situation from somebody that didn't have to do with the game. That's what bothered me. Um, when I look at him, I don't think he still don't think he punched him in the face, but whatever that was, it's not allowed. And you can't, you can't give anyone a doubt, especially in a physical game like that. What happened last year, I know how hard the NFL and the refs are going to make sure it doesn't get carried away. Um, so that's stuff we talk about all the time. If you get a penalty, you're wrong. 
and we got to work our way to always do that in every aspect, and that's what we do. Um, I just thought it was unfortunate he got ejected for that. I had nothing pro wrong with the penalties. I just was surprised he got ejected for what he did and to someone who wasn't involved in the game. He has developed like a reputation unfairly and doesn't get the benefit of the doubt in those like 50 50 moments. Yeah, well, I think it goes back to what I was initially saying about him. When you have someone who plays the way he does, that's what people are looking for because um, it's always close. But that's why every time he hits someone clean and stuff, you usually see sidelines pointing out what he did wrong and stuff because he's just a physical player. And that's why he's so good. But it's not something like we have a big problem here with 15 yard penalties. There's nothing where I ever said to anyone, well, that was well earned. Like, that's not how we roll at all. Our players know that. I, I, they know how I am, how we are. And um, that's why Dre, I can't tell you how much Dre's apologizing to me after the game. It's not him giving me excuses. It's him saying, Kyle, I, I'm sorry I let you down. And it's just, I get what happened, and it can't happen. That's what we coach, but I, that's, that's why I love dealing with the guy. What would, you, what would you do if Mike or someone pushed a player on another team in that situation? Um, I also don't think he pushed the guy that bad. So I'm not trying to build that up either. Like, I think it was kind of, I think, it, I think that stuff happens all the time. And people break it up. There's no penalties. And you go back and you move on with your life and you get it going. Dre just got ejected. And then when they look at why, well, then I guess then that guy should too. But that's why I don't want that guy made an example out of. And I don't, I just think we should have kept it moving personally. Could it, could it be a strategy that uh, if there's a guy like Dre Greenlaw who people know is on that line, could that be a strategy for other teams to use a non player or coach to try to get him kicked out of a game? Oh, I can't wait till you see what we do this week. <laughs> no, I'm just, yeah, it could be. That's why. That's why they probably did that, so it won't be, it can't be. And that's, um, that's, that's why they probably did make a deal out of that, because no, it, that can't be a strategy. Right. And so they'll put an end to that, which I think they already have. And, um, but that's what players do too. I mean, you know the guys who lose their cool and the guys to mess with, so you can get a free 15, and um, that's how the whole league works. What's the coping point for Dre in that situation with Dom, just to walk away? Yeah, yeah, get away. And that's... Easier said than done, but it doesn't matter. The whole thing is, is you got a penalty, and you got a penalty before that, and which I get is he wants to explain that to me too, and I can look in and see what he's saying. I know when someone gets slammed and how it is, and he does that the last second. He's a pretty strong guy, and they should call that. Um, but I also know uh, when you get a penalty, you're at fault. If Chase the week before would have got ejected because he was pointing, smiling with a guy in Seattle that it was all love with, he probably knew, and his hand got bumped and he hit a ref and got ejected. That's his fault too. Like it's, it's the heat of battle. They're not. No one's trying to screw each other. You're just those guys are trying to get it right and it's intense. And that's why we just want to play football. And football is a physical game. Uh, but when that whistle's done, the football play is over. Um, so let's stop doing anything else. Sent a memo uh, reminding coaches what sideline behavior is allowed. And have they assured you that Dre's not facing suspension or anything? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't checked my email yet, and I, I never have in my life. But people bring me one, important ones, and I haven't got that yet. So maybe today, but no one's brought it to me yet. He's, he's out of the clear of any suspension. I don't know. I don't. I, I would assume so, but yeah, I haven't. I don't know yet. Kyle, you'll be pleased to know your your team is atop a lot of NFL power rankings. Um, it's so great. Congrats. Uh, but it is similar to like when you guys whipped the Cowboys, and you know everyone's like, "Got you in the Super Bowl." And I know Lynch and some players have alluded to the fact that you know it's just human nature to kind of feel like we're really good, and you are. Um, but you know maybe that led that was at least a little part of the three game losing streak. Do you have to address that, or do you plan to address that? Yeah, I, I talked to the guys. I mean, I talked talk to them always. So, and it's, I think. People know from that experience how that felt. And I don't think that's why we played bad, but I don't think it helped us. And that's just, I mean, as Bobby T and my dad say, that's why people sell papers. I say that's why people try to get clicks, um, but everything's gonna be extreme. I mean, you're gonna be either really, really good or, or really, really bad, and that, that's just how it works. And that's what's great about our league, but that has nothing to do with us. And I mean, that game, I know the end result looked really good, but you guys saw, could go any way. 
Um, I mean, they brought in a one score there in the third quarter after Dre got kicked out. Um, there was easily could have been down 21 to zero after the first quarter. Uh, there's a very fine line there between two to five plays, and it ends up looking like the game got out of hand. But it's it's very similar to the the um, Thursday night game versus Seattle. Um, that that was a close game. Luckily, our defense um, stayed strong there in that third quarter rally. Um, but that was right there, and just couple plays and then it doesn't look close, but they're always close. Kyle, he was the first receiver since Jerry Rice for this organization to be named the NFC Offensive Player of the Week three times. How special is he to the 49ers? Uh, Debo's awesome. I mean, he's, um, I mean, just as you guys know, he's a special guy when he gets that ball in his hands and um, him and Jerry are probably wired a little bit differently how they play the game, but um, they both played at a high level and really helped the Niners out a lot. Uh, on the Debo tunnel screen, uh, when I watched it again, I saw that uh, McCaffrey really sold the halfback toss. And I don't think Debo scores without that play fake on the backside. Did you show that to the team this week? And, and is that your guys' culture or is that all CMC? That's our culture, but <clears throat> um, when we point that all out, and when someone doesn't do it, they, we point that out also. So guys have pressure on each other to not let the other guy down. Um, but I will say Christian is the best player I've ever been around without the ball in his hand. Just the little things he does that are so obsessive. Like, yeah, everybody carry out fakes and stuff, but he just he goes to the extreme, and it's unbelievable. 15th game against Pete Carroll since you've been here. Does game planning get easier or harder the more familiarity you have with an opponent? Um, I mean, they've changed coordinators a number of times, I, I think. I think easier would be the wrong word. I think we both understand how our teams are going to be. Um, so it's you don't have to overcomplicate things too much, which I guess when you don't overcomplicate things, it makes it easier. But it's not as in either of us are easy to go against. We just I know what we're going to get from them, and I think they know what they're going to get from us. And uh, that's why it's going to be a battle. You love Logan Ryan, and what, what can he add? Um, I mean, just the losing the safeties that we have this year and stuff, and knowing that there's a, a guy out there like Logan who I don't know personally, but playing against him a bunch, um, whether it was that corner, nickel, or safety, uh, you could just always tell he was a very hard guy to schematically beat, very aware, aware player, very similar to how Gip was or before we got him um, and things like that. So when you do lose a lot of guys, you'd love to have an option to bring in a guy um, who's played some football and doesn't have to learn everything for the first time. He's been around enough to understand it, and I was glad we were able to get him in here. I know you love grinding uh, punter tape, but with Mitch, how, how, how much of an impact is he making on this team, especially given kind of the limited opportunities that, that he's getting? This year? Mitch is huge. I mean, I don't know the stats. You guys check them out because they're awesome, but like how many punts he has inside the five or ten compared to the, to the next guy. Um, he's been so automatic with that, how hard his punts are to catch, the way he can knuckle it and things like that. And... Um, He's been a stud this year. It's been really good. Kyle, more for Seattle game, um, Pete, instead of going with his typical five-man surface, gave a lot of four-man looks up front. Were you surprised by that? And what, what are, what's behind a, a wrinkle like that? And now they started doing that since like week two. I think it had to do more with um, just their personnel. They got a lot of depth. They got a number of corners. They got a number of safeties. Um, it's just how you want to deploy them. I mean, you have five bigs on the on the field, then you're going to have one less corner. You're going to have an extra safety there. So it's uh, you, you'd have to ask him, but I think they're trying to get their best players out there, and they mix it up a bunch. Um, but they stuck. That's kind of who they their team has become this year. Uh, coordinator or head coach, does this have the potential to be the best offense you've ever coached? Um, I mean, always has the potential. I mean, um. I know the best one was the one I was with in Atlanta in 2016, but um, I mean, we, we're doing pretty good like that team, too. So it's got potential. I'll let you decide. Kyle, uh, the last couple of games, he had two pretty big plays that he's really had to fight for. What is it about his personality and kind of work ethic that makes him so reliable in the situation? Um, Juwan, just he's one of a kind, as you guys probably know, just talking to him. Um, he, just watch him on run plays. He does those run plays like he does that third and seven when there's three guys trying to tackle him. I mean, Juwan's on another level of confidence, energy. Um, he, the only person who holds Juwan back is us. We got Juwan is ready to take over at all times is, is his mindset. And that's why when we come to him, whether it's every few games or a bunch in one game, um, he's always seems like he's 
It's going to rise to the occasion and make one of the most important plays in the game. All right, guys. All right, thanks, guys.